Hey there, FlossTube. It's Lori, also known as Sharky Stitcher on this channel and on Instagram. We talk about cross-stitching on this channel. It's fun, so come on in. Welcome. It is January 18th, 2023, so Happy New Year. This is my first video, I think, for this year. Uh, I keep meaning to film. I just have been getting busy, and oh my god, th this video is probably going to be long. <laughs> so the main theme for this video, I'm sure you read the title and all that, but we're going to be going over basically my new start hit list for the most part. And I have more things that I want to start than I did on my whip parade. <laughs> so it is whip parade season, which is always fun. I try to do mine at the end of the year, and then I can focus on the new stuff I'm going to start in the new year. So that's kind of what I do. But um, I noticed when I was watching other people's whip parades, because come on, that's fun. That's I think a lot of people's favorite videos to watch are the whip parades. And I know when I filmed my whip parade, I was kind of like, I don't really have as many whips as I think. Well, you're going to see now exactly why that is, because I have all these things kitted up, some of them ready to rock and roll. I just haven't thrown them on the bars yet. And in my brain I was counting them as whips so that's why I felt like I had more so this time next year when we do the whip parade it's going to be a longer video that's my goal because I kind of looking at my whip parade video I'm like you know I really don't have a ton I mean especially compared to others other people had like two hour long videos and I'm like mine was only like a half hour I was like what the hell um, I did forget about a couple of mine, mainly because they're kind of flirting with um, UFO or unfinished object territory. By the way, WIP stands for work in progress. I forgot to show all my Teresa Wenslers, which I only have two. Uh, one, I will say, is a UFO. That's the Egyptian sampler. Haven't touched it in forever. Uh, and then the other one's Peacock Tapestry. I didn't touch it all last year, and I always have a goal to finish it every year, and it's not even halfway done, I would say. So, I feel bad about skipping that one, but I've shown it on this channel before, and it hasn't moved since the last time you saw it. So, I mean, I think it's fair to call it kind of a UFO, even though I feel guilty about that. <laughs> so, I do still want to get that piece finished, So, but we'll see. But anyways, for tonight, I'm going to show you all... My room is a mess. I've brought an extra table in here because I needed room to spread out because I have been going through fabric. I've been ironing. I've been cutting. I've been surging. I kind of got a new start going. was all happy and yay, new start with that. And then all of a sudden it possessed me. Like, I had decided that I was having a free-for-all and I'm going to start all the things I want and I'm not going to like... Oh, you have to meet this goal on this project before you're allowed to pick up another one. I think part of the reason for that with me is I've had several finishes lately. I'll get into that in a minute. And I have several potential finishes coming up too. So in my brain, when you finish something, that's a spot waiting to be filled. <laughs> so I'm kind of like jockeying up, okay, who's on deck? Who's in the hole? Like what order are these going to progress in? So I've kind of organize them into have all the stuff just need to throw the first stitches in they're probably by default going to go first also it depends on you know which one I'm in the mood for <laughs> so and then I've got several others that like I'm dying to start but I'm missing something and sometimes it's a crucial something like the fabric so there's several pieces that fall into that category so but we'll go through all of them if I have like fabric picked and stuff, I'll show that to you guys. I am planning on throwing a bunch of videos on my, in not videos, pictures on my Instagram of floss tosses. Cause that's one of my favorite things to do is floss tosses. It just makes me giddy and it makes me so excited. So that's one of my favorite things to do. So I like sharing, you know, my fabric choices. Cause I try not to do what I would call traditional fabric choices. I like going with like either wilder colors or just not neutral for the most part. So I always, I don't know, feel kind of proud when I find a really cool fabric that makes me excited and I'm excited to share it. So yeah, that's going to be the bulk of this video. And I did a quick head count <laughs> before I started filming. I think I've got 19 things that I have not started that I want to start this year. So if I started something different each day, we'd be into February, which that's not gonna happen because I'm never gonna get enough work in one day for me to feel okay with putting it away. I know I'm not 
holding myself to goals, like I said, but at the same time, I do still have some standards to maintain. I'm not going to throw three, four, five stitches in it and call it good. You know, like, got to get a, a little, little something going. Maybe less than what I like to, because typically when I first start stitching, I like to finish a thing. Like if it's, say, I don't know, a mermaid, and I start on her hair, I like to have the hair, like, one color finished, you know, like, something obvious done or if I'm starting like a pretty lady I like to have like the bodice of the dress done or like the wings outlined of a fairy things like that so that's kind of my goal but from the last video which you guys might have um last floss tube video the numbered ones where I'm sitting and chatting with y'all you guys saw the last final stages of my maiden of tubataha she is now a fully finished object. Not fully finished yet. She is at the framers. She's got a date with the dressmaker, basically. So um, I can't show her to you right now because she's at the framers. But I did film a whole video, just like close-ups going over because I changed most of the beads. Uh, I, go, I went over all of my conversions and things like that. So if you're interested in any of those, check that video out. I also have the same thing listed on my Instagram. I have my conversions listed there. I'm trying to, as I post conversions or post pictures of things with Delicas that I've converted, I'm trying to like add like a little cheat sheet in case you wanted to, to copy. Feel free to like use mine. You can also, you know, just pick and choose a couple because um, that's fun. I love changing beads and I, I think everybody should have that same freedom. <laughs> so I encourage you, if you want to change beads, feel free to change them. You don't have to like, oh, because you're using something that I did, you don't have to use all of them. Just use the ones that you like because I, at the end of the day, I think that's the best thing is, do you like it? So, Maiden of Tubataha is not here for show and tell, but um, I do want to talk about framing at some point in this video. Um, because I've been shopping for a new local framer and she's at a local framer. And it's a funny story and I'll, I'll tell it later if I, hopefully if I don't forget. <laughs> but um, there's several different frame shops and I've been like visiting them and trying and like pretty much auditioning them. So, and I'm not done looking. I'm going to look around a little bit more. Price compare, who does the best work. I'm so happy with Rensel Studios work on these two pieces here. Um, and I will say from like shopping around at the local frame places and from what I've heard people pay at like Michael's, I like don't want, I want to use like a local business that's a small business. I don't want to go to a chain because I've heard mixed reviews about the quality of like Michael's or Joanne's framing and I just don't want to go that route. So I'm not even going there, but I've heard people pay like $400 to like frame a Mirabilia, like kind of like Mermaid of the Pearls back there, like something that size. $400. I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm willing to pay that much, but it better be, you know, blowing my skirt way up, you know? So, and I don't hear that so much about Michael's that. And again, I want to support smaller businesses. So, but, um, we'll talk about framing a little bit later. I'm going to try and get into the more show and telly stuff. So in addition to finishing Maiden of Tubataha, I finished a few other little things and those were largely motivated by the Fortnite Fabrics Fair which happened just a couple days ago and basically on the Fortnite Fabrics Facebook group um, we had emailed pictures into of our finished objects fully finished objects that had to be like framed or like an ornament or finished in some way and you sent your picture and they had seven categories I think and um, we basic, they posted them on the Facebook group and people voted for the winners and there was a first, second, third place in each category. I got two second place winning ribbons. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So I won a ribbon for what I entered into the Halloween category, which I will show you. You guys have seen it before, but you haven't seen it finished. So um, while I was at the frame shop dropping off Maiden of Tubataha, I was also shopping for this frame for my Halloween window and it was $25 and I just brought it home and there it is. Isn't it cool? So this is Halloween window. This is a magazine design and if I'll put the magazine name and date, it's an older one. So, I mean, you might be able to find it somewhere. I have seen this pop up on eBay sometimes, like just this design. I did change a lot of things on this. Like I used an overdyed 
fabric or not fabric thread for around the window these are two different colors here this middle one i have no clue what this is because it was like an extra thread that someone or some store you know how sometimes stores will throw you like little extra goodies it was one of those and i just had enough to finish this i would love to know what it is but it was like a pearl like a silk pearl kind of thing maybe it was rayon i'm not sure but it was like silky not cotton so and then uh Let's see, I added beads to the cat's eyes and the bat's eyes. There's orange beads on the bat, green beads on the kitties. I also put some whisper in the kitty's tail so they're a little fluffy and pissed off looking. This thread for the spider web was the DMC Diamante. It's like on a spool, you know, like it was pretty decent. I, I, don't, I didn't mind it too much. Um, I do think before, because I haven't finished making the back all neat and tidy on here. I do think I might want to pull it back out and maybe add a thread of the same color here for the spider to be hanging down. I'm kind of like, when I was looking at my picture on when people were voting for it, I'm like, you should have done that. <laughs> so I think it needs that before I fully finish it in there. And then there's a bunch of black work, as you can see. And of course, the pumpkin is stitched on a black fabric on there. That's Echo by Pictureless Plus. This is just a basic opalescent raw linen. So, but yeah, and when I framed this, I put a piece of foam core between the two pieces of fabric to give it some space. That way it has that three-dimensional look, which is what I was going for. So I'm really happy with it. I think it's super cute and I'm so thrilled that I got a ribbon for it because there were some really nice things entered. Like um, the one that won in this category was an Aura Corbet Witch, you know, so that was really nice. There was a few other pieces that were really nice, so I was... I don't know, worried that I'd entered something kind of on the small and less known side. So I was really happy that people actually voted for it. Also, I didn't talk too much on this channel about what I was entering because I didn't want to like go and vote for me, guys. I kind of wanted to just, if people thought it was deserving of a vote, I, that's how I wanted to get votes. So I'm kind of weird that way. Um, the other piece I got a ribbon for was in the ornament category, and, uh, so, okay, story time first. So, I told you guys in my last video that I had finished an ornament, and I had the picture of it, and they said it didn't have to be finished, like, within the last year or so, it was, and this was, like, two years ago. I had finished the Delightful Dragon Fob by Teresa Wensler, and finished it into, like, a fob ornament type thing. And we did a Christmas exchange on the Teresa Wensler Facebook bulletin board. So I had sent it out and I had forgotten to take a picture of it before I sent it. Well, then the gal that received it took a picture of it. And it was a decent picture, but it was kind of like, I kept thinking like, I want a better picture. So I had it in my mind that I'm going to stitch it all over again. And I kind of felt like I should, you know, because it was a new thing. But I was finishing that. I was also finishing, I'll show you this in a minute. Um, a few other things, and it just got to be kind of too much, but I did finish the dragon. <laughs> so let me show you the delightful dragon, because I wanted to restitch this for myself anyway, so I have one to keep. So I finished the little dragon. I'm going to try and adjust the light, because this is a, a teeny tiny, look at it. This is an over one dragon, and we're going to play with the light here a little bit. Do, do, do. Crap, it's not going to work. Oh, God. So there's the dragon. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to get this to stop blurring out. Let me back it up on something. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get it to show up proper. I know. I'm going to kidnap Luna right here. She's still sitting here. I tend to sit and stare at all of my finishes while I'm working just to remind me, you can finish it. They, they're like my little cheerleaders. Okay. So it's a teeny tiny little over one dragon. And I don't know if you can see, there's like some metallics and the fabric's opalescent. But yeah, teeny tiny. Um, I haven't posted a picture on my Instagram yet because again, I was trying not to like, hey guys, go vote for me. You know, I was trying not to draw, draw attention that way. Gosh, so frustrating. Focus, oh my God. See if I can get it to focus a little bit better. I don't know, probably not. Yeah, that's as good as it's gonna get. But you see, there's like little metallics in the tail and in the wing, and little teeny tiny beads for eyes. There's a very special bead that is, it's what's called for in it. Oh, and by the way, this design is out of print. 
and it was only available via PDF. And Teresa yeeted all the dragons off of whatever sites were selling her stuff. So you can't get this design. I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> so don't ask me for it because that's illegal on me and I don't want to be a criminal. <laughs> so um, I did finish the dragon. I didn't finish the backside, which I was kind of like, you know, I don't really have to finish the backside. But I feel kind of dumb because in the ornament category, one person did post like a side-by-side -side picture front and back. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I don't know. But um, here's what I got done on the back. As you can see, not a whole lot. Almost just got the frame outlined. The back is a lot simpler. There's a bunch of eyelets and some fan stitches. There is some more over one. And then I'm there's a spot for you to put like initials on it. And I think I'm going to put Sharky Stitcher on mine just because I think that's fun. So haven't got to that yet though. Lost gas on that um, when I was finishing all this other stuff. But real quick, let me show you my um, Autumn Desk Bell Pull by Chatelaine Designs. This one did not place. There were a lot of seasonal designs and a lot of them were on the large size. So, and this is a bell pull. So one downside to um, submitting a picture of a finished Chatelaine design is for it to be, it's a single picture. And for it to be far away enough to get everything in frame, you kind of lose a lot of the details. So and my favorite detail is this, like, this kind of reminds me of the centers. It's very, very sparkly. And there's lots of cool fancy stitches in it. And, of course, my little, little fox button that I got off Etsy when I finished this piece. The hedgehog that's right here was supposed to go there. But then there was two squirrels up here, and I hate squirrels. So I decided I was going to put this fox bead here because I thought it fit so perfect. And the colors match perfect. So I decided to move the hedgehog up and I gave him some mushroom buddies from like these mushrooms up here. So yeah, I entered this in the seasonal and it didn't place. And I, I don't even know, I don't, it, it, I wasn't gonna win nothing in that one. So I, I didn't even pay attention to what place or anything that one was. And then I also entered Taj Mahal in the um, what, mis miscellaneous open. It was like basically the free for all category. And she, I think, got fourth place or something. So just shy of a ribbon. So that sucks, but oh well, I did get two ribs out. I'm just so excited to get a ribbon you know, from Fortnite Fabrics Fair. That was just exciting for me. So to get two second place ones, I don't think that's too shabby. So I'm excited about that. So yay, I did enter, did I enter one other thing? Yes, oh, I entered um, Pisces, who's now under Autumn Dusk. She was in the humanoid category. And this category, like, I kind of was having like a philosophical debate or it, it, it inspired a philosophical debate because, you know, Pisces, one of the Zodiac Girls by Nora Corbet, it's one of the smaller, like, Nora Corbet designs. And it was in contending with larger, like, pretty ladies, like Bellatrix by Bella Filipina, which won first place in that category. Much deserved. It was very gorgeous. And it was, like, one of them things where when I look at, like, judging for, like, fairs or anything like that, I look at, like what's the most complex that's executed well, you know? So like, she's got a lot of beads in her. I did her skin over one, but when you put her next to like Bellatrix, like, sorry, Bellatrix is a lot more work. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I would vote on. But I started thinking, I'm like, what if Bellatrix was up against uh, Magwayan or another equal size, equal complexity, uh, Bella Filipina, both professionally finished, no wrinkles, stitching looks good. I mean, it, as good as like a, a picture can look. Like it's not like you can zoom in and get a good look at everything. When it comes down to like, say if I had Pisces versus Capricorn, as a judge, how do you decide which one wins other than, oh, I like this one better? You know, like how do you keep it fair and neutral, I guess, you know? So I, 
I was like, what if everybody in the category enters like a different zodiac sign? Like, how do you pick who wins <laughs> if they're all like equal level? It's, I don't know. I was just like, dang, you know, I, at the end of the day, if I, if I was a judge and it got down to, these are the same size, same complexity, um, same skill level executed. Yeah. I'd probably pick the one I like better just because how else do you, <laughs> you know? So that was an interesting philosophical debate I had about like, uh, um, judging after that. But anyways, that was a lot of fun. So hope they do that next year. I haven't heard, heard of it yet. Right now, I guess, um, they both got over the flu and stuff like that. So I haven't seen them post like an update after the end of the fair. So I haven't heard, you know, what their thoughts are on it. Did they think it went well and all that? So, but yeah, that was fun. That was exciting. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, now I think I'm going to show you guys my new whip, um, which is, Hang on a second. Okay, so before I get into the new whip, <laughs> it, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got stuff everywhere. If the stu if what you guys can't see over here, there's a lot more of it because I've got stuff all piled up. It's, it's a mess. So having to prep for this video kind of helped me a little bit because it was stuff that needed done. So me wanting to film it kind of helped me get things organized and start picking through them a little bit more. So thank you guys for that motivation. But anyways, I've got, when I do a whip, I tend to keep them in little things like this. Um, my whips that are not chatelaines. My chatelaines are in drawers. So I don't know. I'm weird. I like to keep my chatelaines in drawers for some reason. And everything else goes in a bin like this. And I usually label the bin with what I'm working on. And this is Queen Mariposa by Mirabilia. And of course the chart's not in here. It's got to be over here somewhere. There it is. All righty. And this one is a work in progress right now. So pieces of it are strewn around my desk because that's how I work. <laughs> so, and typically I don't have all these piled out everywhere. Usually I just have the one piece I'm working on, but right now I'm kidding up a bunch of stuff. So anywho, when I get things kitted up, I have my design in here. Um, I will throw, and when I'm in like the kitting up process, I'll probably throw the fabric in here. I throw the threads in, which depending on how big of a project, it's either a big one of these or one of the small one of these and beads and all that. So this is Mirabilia's queen, Mary Posa. She's like the butterfly queen. And this piece, remember when I saw it? At first, I didn't pay too much attention to it because I was just like, mm, pretty lady in a dress. You know, like, that's not my favorite thing to stitch. It's fun occasionally. But I'm more into, like, the mermaids, the fairies, the, like, creatures, you know, kind of thing. Instead of just, oh, it's a pretty lady. But I blame uh, Instagram and some other people's close-ups of this design because this dress is a lot prettier than it looks on this picture. Which, you know, Mirabilia's are kind of notorious for... Not having awesome pictures and not having awesome fabric color choices. So, yeah, I sometimes you just got to see someone stitching it and go, ooh, I like that. I'm into it. I want to stitch it. And for some reason, she kind of possessed me a little bit. Like, her dress is like this weird gray-green color. And then it's got that overskirt with all these kind of fuchsia, red, rich tones in it. So, I have her over here. And I will get her ready to show you just because I want to get that part out of the way because that's going to be the most. I'm going to have to, I have stuff on the floor too. <laughs> so I have a debris field from this little creating my hit list. Oh man, I wrote my needle threader. All right. Let me take this um, working copy off here. I flipped it over, but may as well just move it out of the way. So this fabric is. Um, what, what is this fabric? Hang on a second. Um, it is Stardust, I think, by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. And kidnap this again. And I adore it. It's amazeballs. And so here is where I'm at. And I think she's going to look awesome on this. I was really digging the rich, yummy color palettes with this one. Like, in the dress and in the fabric. I know it's kind of like 
same same because pretty much like the red parts of her dress are like the same as this here but that's kind of why i chose to place the fabric like this there's not a lot of red down here at all so the red on the dress is going to pop out against these blues and purples for the most part and then there's a bunch of the butterflies and whatnot up here so i do that when i choose these fabrics with lots of colors in them when i'm plotting my plan of attack i kind of look at like okay which part of the body do I want to land in what place so yeah that's what I'm going with and I picked out several of my since she's the butterfly queen I picked out some of my butterfly and moth needle minders by clay by Kim and of course my witch and my peacock because I love them <laughs> so yeah I am dying for this fabric oh look at it it's so yummy and this fabric's fun too because when you get it each piece looks pretty different there's actually another piece that I'm kidding up on a piece of fabric like this and it's a lot different like this one's very blue purple red kind of rich warm royal colors i mean it's very bold either way but the other piece i have has more green and more blue in it so it's kind of cool I, I i like fabrics that like okay it's like a melted box of crayons you know like got the same hues and everything but sometimes things run a different way and it gives you kind of a whole different vibe or a look to it so I dig that even though it is also sometimes frustrating if you're in love with a piece of fabric and you want exactly the same thing <laughs> you know it's, it's what you get with loving strangely colored fabrics so yeah I want to get that out of the way because the rest I feel like is going to be a little bit more simple. We will see. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to pack this up and get it out of the way. So that is my first new start of 2023. And basically I started it a few days after New Year's. I was kind of like, oh yeah, I'm going to finish like the whole, I don't know, green gray part of the dress. But then I was like, yeah, there's actually a lot of that. <laughs> it's pretty big it's a big dress you know so that's kind of a lofty goal that and I also kept in mind I want to get other pieces started too so I didn't want to get too lost in her and then once I was working on her and I hit a point I was kind of really wanting to dive into getting all these other things organized because so many of these things that I have in my hit list for tonight have been kitted up for like over a year so I need to get them going make them official whips so then I can delegate them to you <laughs> I shouldn't say that but it might happen okay so let's go into I've got a pile of stuff that is I need to iron the fabric and get it on the bars and I have all the stuff and I can go actually there's two pieces that are even higher in that category and let me see here this one is one of them, and she is on the next piece of Stardust. I think it's Stardust or is it Starburst? I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. If I, if it's not Stardust, I'll put it down in the description what it actually is. And I'll probably link Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers too because they do have some fun fabrics. Okay, so this piece, this is one that while I'm excited to start it because partially because I'm excited about the fabric, um, a lot of a lot of times that's what gets me going if I'm like really excited about the fabric because I'm kind of a fabric whore that way. Um, I'm really excited to start it, but also when I do it, I know there's changes I'm going to want to make and I haven't made them yet, so I know that's going to be a pain in the butt when I get to it. So this is a Bella Filipina, a new mermaid, finished a mermaid, got to get a new one in the rotation. So this is Nereid Galatea. She's gorgeous. There's many stitchers that have done her in, on Instagram and she looks amazeballs. Oh, just, I love it. Love it, love it. She's got, I just love the like orange colors and the coral and I like the shell. The only thing I don't like is her tail. Like it looks kind of like an umbrella to me, an upside down umbrella. So I'm thinking, I want to convert it and I've seen conversions that look amazeballs but I'm thinking I might take um, Maiden of Tubataha's tail flip it because her tail Maiden of Tubataha's tail goes this way and I'm thinking maybe if I flip it and it goes this way that might fix it a little bit I don't know 
better I could just take this fin off and flip it here could do that too that's gonna take some I know it can be done in computer programs but I'm a little bit old school so typically the way I fudge charts is by using a copy machine and a pair of scissors <laughs> so that works for me don't judge me for being old-fashioned but let me show you her fabric or real quick let me flash her floss at you so here's the bouquet. It's very royal. I'm into like royal bold colors lately, obviously with her and this one and a few of the others too. Here's her bead pack, which I got from Under the Sea Fabrics. We'll probably convert those to Delica. A lot of these are easy, like these um, silver lined ones. Those are super easy to convert and not a huge amount of color changes. I might use the big ones if I can't find something that I like better. I do like this, but this, um, I don't even know what you'd call that, like kind of a coral, like a, a bright coral color. Kind of like it. So I might just keep it. And there's a couple metallics, not too many. Silvers and a black. I don't see black metallic used too much, so that's fun. I think it's in her tail, like the webbing or something. And here's the fabric. So this is the Stardust. And I have already ironed it and put my Velcro on it. So it is ready to go on the bars. So she might. But here's this piece of Stardust. As I said before, it's more greens and blues. And I think it'll work really good for her. It's fairly similar to her recommended fabric, which is also by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. I think it's um, Neptune's, Neptune's Keep or something like that. It's Neptune something. But I actually have a piece of this fabric, and the one I have, the green is very lime, and the pink is very Barbie. So I'm not digging it. I like more like the royal rich colors, and there's more blue in this piece, and it's opalescent, of course. So, yeah, I think she's going to look very nice on that. And let me flash the floss for you so you can agree or disagree. Yeah, she's going to be bright, but I dig it. So yeah, I like it. And I think I'm gonna do it this way. That way, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Cause I'm like, her tail is a lot of green colors. So I don't really want the tail to be up here and all the blues and greens. I kind of want it to be like down here where the, where the reds and stuff are. So I also do this thing where when I'm picking my fabric for my piece, then I play the flippy game <laughs> where I'm like, which side is better? Should I do it this way? Should I do it this way? Like, I like to play with where the colors land a lot. That actually looks really cool right up there, too. Hmm. That's an idea. <laughs> but, yeah. So, that's the fun part for me is doing the floss tossing and picking the perfect fabric for every piece. It just makes me happy. So, that was a piece that I got. Oh, another thing I noticed. The Velcro that I got for um, the my scroll frames that I use. These are the Easy Stitch frames by American Heritage, I think it is. I get mine off of um, Amazon and I'll put that down below in the description as well. And I've had, I think this was like a 12 meter roll or something. And I've had it for like a year or so. And I noticed when I was prepping this and the next piece of fabric that I'm gonna show you, I was having a hard time getting the, the backing off of it. So I think because I've had it so long, like it, the gum is getting a little too adhered to things. So I have a mind to like use this up as soon as possible before that gets any harder, which as you'll see tonight, I have plenty of candidates for the tape. I do have another one of these too, but I feel like it's fresher, so it'll probably be okay. I kind of like to have a roll at all times in case something possesses me and I happen to have all the fabric and stuff for it and I want to just start on it now. So I always try to have some in stock. You know, like how you like to have extra needles, make sure you have plenty of beading thread, all your, your personal essentials for stitching. That's important. Okay, so while I'm down here, I'm gonna pull out the next piece of fabric. I think I showed this in a previous video but I didn't have the fabric ironed and ready to rock and roll. Uh, this one, I don't even have a bin yet. I need to go bin shopping because I need a lot more. <laughs> yeah, so, but like I said, 
I want more whips for my next whip parade. I don't want it to be a little half hour video. I did kind of go pretty fast because in my brain I thought, oh, you got so many, go faster, the video is going to take forever. I'm kind of okay with those videos taking forever just because they're fun. So this design is another Bella Filipina. This is the Hummingbird Pixie. I love her because she reminds me of the 80s. She's like Punky Brewster meets Cindy Lauper. You know, like she's just, she's got like this wild, like, I don't know if you can see it, but she's got like this purple and blue eyeshadow. Is it purple and blue? She's got very bright 80s style pink blush and like purple eyeshadow. I just think she's cool. And I love the little pop of yellow in her wings. This fabric is like a gray color. And I, I, I like purple, but she's wearing a lot of purple. So I didn't know that I wanted to go with purple. And I like the pop of the yellow in the wings. So I, when I was looking for my fabric, I was keeping that in mind. And I happen to have this piece. This was from my favored eBay seller, Crazy Hamster. And here is what this fabric looks like. So it's very kind of springy. And it's showing up pretty true. The little darker bits are actually more purpley, but it's a subtle purple, like almost a gray purple. But it's like greens and yellows and pinks, very kind of Easter colors. And let me show you the floss toss that made me go, oh yeah, that will work. And I'm gonna try not to dump everything on the floor. <laughs> so, oh God. Here's the floss colors, so they will pop very nicely on this. Yes, I'm excited about this. I think this is a good match. And because I'm excited about the match, that bumps her higher up in the to be started list also because I have all the stuff for her. Uh, she does have a fair bit of beads and <laughs> mine are all loose. So I'm not gonna pull out each and every one and show them to you, but they need converted to Delica's stat. So but let me roll this piece up and this dyer um, does like solos for the most part. So there's not like a fabric name for this or anything. Uh, when she posts stuff, you just gotta be the first person to grab it if you really like it. This is a, it's not opalescent, which don't, let's not talk about that too much because I do get my panties twisted about that a little bit, especially for a fairy design, but yeah, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> I think this is a 28 count linen, which typically when I get from this um, dyer, typically the ones that she does that I like are like even weave, which is kind of weird for me because I do typically prefer linen. I like the loose softness of it. Uh, even weaves are a lot of times on the thicker side. So yeah, that is high up on the to be started list. Got all my stuff, got the fabric ready to go on the bars. Alrighty. So this one, we're getting into the part of the pile where I have all the stuff, but the fabric isn't pressed, Velcroed, ready to go. Sometimes it needs cut too. This piece I think does need cut. Okay, so this one you guys have seen me talk about recently. Temptress of the Cursed Sea, another mermaid by Bella Filipina. So, the last time I showed her to you guys, I was indecisive about the fabric. Well, everybody said, oh, heck yeah, you got to do her on Galaxy. So, I'm going to do her on Galaxy. <laughs> so, yeah, she's going to go on this piece here. She is a lot of purples and... Uh, green, like teal green colors, but I think it'll be okay. Yep, I'm loving it. I'm so ready. I've been wanting to start her since like Halloween last year, for real. Now, one funny thing, funny. <laughs> when I was kidding her up, I think I got everything except for like the threads from Under the Sea Fabric for summer. That are... They were missing a thread, I think. Yeah, I think that's what was happening. And so they sent me all of them except for one. Well, then I was digging through my stash and I found this thread, which I thought, ooh, when I looked at it, get closer so you guys can see. Uh, when I looked at it with the called for threads, I was like, that kind of goes like, cause look at, look at this sweet harmony. I was like, ooh. And this I had just because if it's purple, I buy it. <laughs> and so I, I kind of have a lot of like 
random purple metallics, random like teal, turquoise metallics. I have a lot of silver too because I like, if something's called for gold, I tend to prefer silver. So a lot of times I'll convert it. So I have like several different silvers for that reason. So I, I kind of threw this in there just because I thought, well, that looks pretty good. Well, then I got the actual called for in the mail, like they sent it to me. And here it is. And I like this one better because this one's very blue, purple. This one's just, you know, kind of a yummy plum, you know, sugar plum or something. And I thought, I like you better. So you're going in there. But I still have this one in here just because... I'm indecisive sometimes, and I don't have anything else to use it for, so it may as well. Sometimes I like to remind myself, this was a conversion, this is what you converted from, you know, so like, know where you're coming from so you know where you're going kind of thing, if that makes any sense. So, but yeah, one more look at this yummy fabric, mm, so good. I need to get me some more of this, though, you know how that goes, sometimes you order it and it's like, oh. It's not as pretty as it was last time, though, you know, could be prettier too, or it could be just like this, you know, you never know. But yeah, that one, very high on the list to um, put my, it's probably the next thing I'm going to put the Velcro tape on and get on the bars. It might be the next thing I start too, just because I've been dying to start her. I am doing her skin in the gray tones because I, I like the not human, gross zombie creature effect for the most part which she is kind of like a creature because like her ear is like serrated which I think is really cool you can't tell in the picture but like looking at the chart it's like her ears serrated how awesome so yeah I do think she might be the next one I start that and since I've finished a mermaid I want to get a mermaid started really quick and since this one I'm not really converting anything like I am with the uh Nereid this one would be a more logical one to start first. Sometimes I like to use logic. <laughs> okay. This next one, I don't have absolutely everything for it. I need a few more metallics, I think. I think I'm missing a couple of flosses. I'm trying to reorganize here um, to save myself future angst. Okay. And this one I've shown you a few times. I also need to trim the fabric up a little bit which what's fun about this is the fabric here is a leftover piece from, I had to buy a full yard for a Chatelaine design. Um, this was for Rainforest Lace Mandala. And this was the piece that I cut off the full yard of. So I'm kind of excited that I'm getting to use it because it's like recycling. <laughs> I don't know, I feel good about it because of that. But let me show you the design first. I've shown you this a couple times, but I'm serious about getting it started this year. So this is Romance Under this of the Sea by Dimples Design, aka Terrence Nolan. It's a couple of mer mermaid and merman snogging. <laughs> so I have them, and here's the fabric. Da -da -da -da. Now this one is not showing true because this is a yummy blue, but it's got all these undertones of other colors. You can kind of see them a little bit, but they're washing out on there. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Um, here's the threads. You're going to see a lot of purple, yellow, and skin colors basically, because that's what it is. I'm going to try not to dump everything on the floor. I got some random treasure braid there. Okay, try not to dump it on the floor. That is the ultimate goal. Yeah, I think that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, and this is opalescent, so I'm happy. I do think I might make a wee conversion. And I, I'm gonna try and show you guys, but I know it's probably gonna be hard for you to see. I'm gonna try though. Um, I'm not digging his hair color. Um, First off, he's a blonde, which I like, but a lot of times in cross stitch, when blondes are attempted, they become very yellow. <laughs> but what bothers me about that for him is, oh gosh, I don't know if you can see it. He's got a beard. And because it's blonde, like you can't really see it, 
very well. At least I can't. I don't know if you guys could, but I feel like I need to make his hair darker. That way his beard is darker. I'm thinking of making him a ginger, you know, making him, I mean, she's kind of got auburn colored hair, kind of sort of coppery colored hair, but I'm thinking about making him like my vision is kind of, oh, what was his name? Um, Tormund, Giant, Giant Bane, Giant Spain from Game of Thrones, you know, ginger with ginger beard. Kind of thinking maybe that kind of color for him. But same problem as like a blonde in cross stitch. A lot of times the reds become Ronald McDonald, you know, instead of being like actual ginger hair. But um, I'm going to try and come up with something. And to be fair, like his hair is kind of the least of my worries. My biggest worry is Y'all know I like to do the skin over one. There's miles of skin in this one because of the dude and the chick. And uh, I also am not 100% in love with their tails because they get a little meh looking at the end. But uh, I don't know. I'm not really that bothered by it. But definitely, and part of me is like, you don't have to do the skin over one. You don't have to. But most of these stingrays are over one. If they're over one, it is going to bug me like crazy if the skin isn't over one too, so. And I'm thinking I might try a different um, strategy with this one because um, I've seen other people on Instagram, I think um, Luda, basically, I think I've seen her when she's doing like over one skin, sometimes she does the back stitching first, which I think that's gonna make it so much easier because you can at least see kind of like where you're going and be able to tell if you've miscounted or something along the way, because frogging over one is the worst, in my opinion. Over one's just kind of the worst, in my opinion. I just, eh, it's just tedious. And part of my brain is like whispering at me, why are you doing this? You're making your work, to, you know, twice as long, you know, if you'd have done a full cross. But um, I just, I like the finished effect and it's worth it to me. So that's how I get that voice to shut up. But yeah, this one's very high on the start list. I think I'm missing a couple metallics and I need to cut the fabric because it's a little bit too long. So yeah, I'll have even more leftovers. Maybe I can use on an ornament or something. So that is the serious pile. Like I'm wanting to get those going, probably all of them by March. Not gonna put too rigid of a deadline on that, but that's kind of what I would like to see happen. So one of them mermaids is getting started pretty soon here. I'm probably actually done with her for now because I want to get something else started. So like she's started, I might do a little bit more of the dress. Um, there is a bunch of um, B5200 right here in the front that I haven't done yet just because I'm like nervous because like that stuff is so wide. If you have like any kind of dirt or anything on your fingers, like it shows up. And sometimes I'm even afraid of like stitching it down too early because then like later maybe dust will get on. I don't know like paranoia <laughs> but so yeah that is the serious pile so now let's move into um let's add one more to the serious pile actually because this poor girl I've been wanting to start her like for a while and I've had everything for a while I just haven't started her yet so this is Mirabilia's Fairy Idyll. She is out of print. She can be pricey, but I found her on eBay for 20 bucks and the chart's pretty pristine. So if you're wanting this design, stalk eBay and be patient. You might get lucky. Happens sometimes. Happened to me very recently, which that reminds me, I'm probably gonna show you that at the after I'm done going through all these, if I don't forget. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Uh, Fairy Idyll, I've always pictured doing her on a soft green, and this is Valor by Picture This Plus. It's kind of a larger piece because she's kind of a larger piece, and I do need to go over. I have my um, dimensions on her, but sadly, past me, didn't write down if that was the stitching size or the fabric needed size. I'm thinking it's the fabric needed size but I want to double check first and cause I don't think I need this entire piece. And if I don't need the entire piece, I'd like to trim it up a little bit just to make my life easier while I'm stitching it. The less extra fabric that I've got, the better, you know? So I do really like this color. It's very soft. Again, slightly bothered. It's not opalescent, but I'm trying not to think about it too much. For some reason, I'm 
a little bit more okay with shafting my fairies on opalescent than I am with my mermaids. <laughs> you know, like I don't, I love my mermaids a little more. What can I say? But anyways, here's a quick little flossy tossy. And part of the reason I was digging the green is I want that yellow dress to pop. And I feel like green makes the yellows pop really nicely. So that was the ultimate goal for that. Also, I'm thinking like her wing is like kind of a green color. It's kind of like a dragonfly wing almost. I don't know if it calls for metallics, but if it doesn't, I'm throwing them in there. Because one thing I will say when you're working on non-opalescent fabric is the stuff that you're stitching that is sparkly is so much more obvious when the whole thing isn't sparkly. So it's got that going for it. And who knows, maybe me making myself stitch on non-opalescent fabric will make me realize that everything doesn't have to be opalescent. I doubt that <laughs> because many times like when I'm working on um, Gypsy Queen, Tribal Queen as I like to call her, a lot of times I'm still thinking like, you know, it should be so much prettier on Opalescent. And it's like, I know, but you're too far now to turn back. So, okay, who's next? Um, let's go with this one because I'm staring at it. Now this one, I've had for over a decade, but I still am not satisfied with the fabric for her. And I don't know what my deal is with that, um, but let's talk. Maybe you guys can figure out what my deal is. Okay, so this is Deepest Love by Mirabilia. This is one of the original trios of mermaid. I say original trio because when I first started stitching, there was only three Mirabilia mermaids. It was this one. Waiting for Ships and Mermaid of the Pearls. I did Waiting for Ships first because I always, she was always kind of my favorite. Like I liked her pose and everything. So I stitched her first. She hangs in my bathroom. Then I've got Mermaid of the Pearls up here. She's kind of my new favorite because she is so drenched in beads and that's like my favorite thing now. This one is probably the least beaded. <laughs> so, you know, I feel bad that she gets done last, you know, but it's not because I don't like her, it's because I can't find the perfect fabric for her. So real quick, let me show you her floss, her threads. And this is how long I have had this kitted up. My Mill Hill beads have yellowed the containers. That's how long I've had this kitted up. When I went on my stitching hiatus, I like quit stitching for like a decade there. This was this. So thankfully I hung on to it. But yeah, mostly sea foam and skin colors and hair colors. That's like it. And then she's got this white gauzy thing. So I've got a pile of fabrics in here. This one I thought was really good, but it's too matchy matchy with her tail. And I'm not digging the monochromatic thing with her. And I, I think that's my problem. Like I was wanting, she's kind of soft and romantic. So I was kind of looking for soft romantic ocean colors. And in my mind, this is a soft romantic ocean color. Um, but her tail blends in too much. So I pretty much need to just pull this out because I'm pretty sure it's not going on here. Another piece that I'm tempting because when I realized, okay, the fabric matching her tail too much is kind of part of my problem with her. I thought, well, okay, pick a fabric that doesn't match her tail. Like, don't just go for blue. So I have this piece of fabrics by hand dyed by Rolanda. And I think that might be kind of cool. Like the purple might help with the tail thing. This is opalescent too. I think this is an even weave. But I'm not 100% on it yet. Not, not yet. Um, then I have this other piece. I like the floss toss, but I don't know that I like the vibe. So this is a piece of under the sea fabrics. This is Hades Realm. And I didn't think about this design when I bought it, but I just started thinking about it when I was tossing. So let's see, this is the side that looks more organic. There we go. So this would solve the tail blending in problem because you know, the colors change. And I wanted her to be on a slightly darker fabric because she's holding on to this like see-through shawl. And I figured if I do her on something too light, this shawl won't show up. 
So it would show up really good on this one. And the threads look okay on it. But I'm just not in love with it. And one thing to pay attention to is don't let the pinks fool you too much on this. There's not a lot of pink in this design. It's mostly the teals and the whites. So I don't know. I'm having such a hard time picking her, her fabric color. I keep playing with it though. We'll get there eventually. I just feel bad for her because she's the last of the original mermaids that I haven't stitched yet. And looking at her chart, she's pretty easy. You know, she's got lots of blocks of colors and minimal beading, which, you know, makes me kind of sad. <laughs> I actually think I'm going to leave this piece of fabric out because I think, I think I finally talked myself into like, yeah, this one's not going to be the one. Here's another piece of fabric by Rolanda, which I just got. And I was thinking about this one too, because it's kind of more blue than green. Let's just switcheroo those. <laughs> That's a future me problem. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's put her here. Meaning tower of whippy whips or would be whippy whips. Okay. Um, I'm looking over here now. These ones, I have most of the stuff for them, kind of, but I'm stalling on them for two reasons. And par partially it's just, I have other things pushing me to be started first. This piece I've shown a long time ago, but um, not recently. Um, this is an odd design. It's another mermaid. This is called Brilliant Mermaid by Dome. So this design is difficult to find. It's also difficult to interpret because uh, it doesn't say what the country of origin is, but there are what appears to be Chinese characters on everything. And the floss recommended is not DMC, but there is a conversion. So, and I wasn't 100% happy with the conversion. Some of the colors were throwing me a little bit. So I'm like tweaking them. So because this one's a conversion, and I'm indecisive sometimes about what I'm converting. That's why it's taking me a minute. So um, I do have her fabric and her fabric is the fabric. I have a video on um, how to repair your fabric like linen and even weave when you have a broken thread. This fabric is the one that I repaired in that video. And it has been on bars for a little while. And look, I still got a needle stuck in there. I need to get that out of there before it rusts. Let's do that now while I'm thinking about it. Bye bye. I can find the middle. Like, come on. Um, so let me unroll this. This is what is you? I think this is another kaleidoscope by um, Fabrics by Stephanie. So there's lots of blues and greens and little splashes of orange, which I think works for her because she's like got splashes of orange. So I think she'll look really cool on this. I'm happy with the idea of it. Let's see if I can find the spot where I patched it. Do, 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 do. Where are you at? Hmm. Is that it? Yeah, I think it's it. All right. Yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see it. It's right here. You just see the little, little fluffy tail from where I tied the threads together just a little bit. Kind of proud of myself for that like if you patch it and you can't find it it's a pretty good patch job right so yeah i'm liking the fabric for her which isn't it funny like how different this kaleidoscope is like it's just so different i like kaleidoscope by fabrics by stephanie stardust by fiberlicious yummy fibers and I love me some Da Vinci from Pictureless Plus, even though Da Vinci is fairly consistent, except for that one wild, wild batch that I got of it. This one, I've got it sitting on the bars. I should just do it. And the reason I still have it sitting on the bars, I think, is after I patched the fabric, I just was, like, nervous about rolling it up. Like, I kind of wanted it to stay rolled up and not get wrinkled. I don't know. That night, I really thought I was going to start it soon. So, but... Um, I converted the conversion for her hair because it was looking really brassy. So I think I used, um, used a lavender and lace to make the decision on it. And I at least have that conversion ready to go. 
So I've been, even though I haven't been stitching on it, I've been preparing, you know, and I made myself a key cheat sheet so I can write all the replacements on there and just have a, a normal key to look at so I don't have to look at the key and then look at the key to the key. I can just make my own key that way. Um, floss is kind of a mess um, because I'm still converting. So kind of all over the place. So want to start her, got the fabric ready to go, still stalling on the threads a little bit. Like I said, these later ones, either there's a lack of motivation because I'm wanting to stitch other things or I'm missing stuff to get it started. I mean, I could get it started without having absolutely everything as long as I start in a spot, you know, that doesn't need that stuff. Because come on, it's not like I'm going to start it and finish it. Like, let's be real here. Okay, so let's get this last one over here out of the way. Again, I need another bin. This one I've had kitted up for a while, but I'm like hesitating on making the final leap for the fabric. So this piece is one I have stitched before already, and I got rid of my finished object. <laughs> and so now I want to stitch it all over again on a cooler fabric. So this is Teresa Wensler's Dragon Ride. That's kind of a crappy picture of it on the front. Let me flip to the actual picture picture in here so you can see the full finished effect. I love this design. It's probably my favorite dragon of hers just because I love the colors. So yeah, Dragon Ride right there. This is out of print obviously because it's in a magazine. It was available for a minute on pat Patterns Online or something like that. But then the dragons got yeeted, so that got yeeted. I really wish I'd have brought, got that online one because mm, this one is available in color, which is so weird for a Teresa Wensler. Like, usually they're black and white, but I'm probably going to use a working copy, so it's going to be black and white anyways. I mean, I could print it off in color, but looking at the confetti and remembering the confetti, I think one will play the highlighter game. So why bother with color if you're going to highlight it? So I am hesitating on making the jump just because fabric, like I like it, but I'm, I have some misgivings. So I have for this piece bank rolls by Fortnite fabrics and I have to sniff it. Now their fabrics, I always talk about how good they smell and they do, but for some reason, like the older pieces I have of it, I don't know if like the smell is maturing or what. But like the newer ones, when I get them, they smell kind of lemony fresh. But the ones that have been sitting around for a little bit. Okay, this is going to sound nuts, but um, to where my brain is going. My brother and I, our grandparents lived in Georgia growing up. And we spent a lot of summers down in Georgia. And they would always come up at Christmas and stay with us. And of course, for Christmas, we would always get some clothes. And me and my brother were both always really excited to get clothes from my grandmother because we would say they smell like Georgia clothes. Like, the, and we'd always talk about it. My mom and my grandmother would think that we're nuts. Like, what are you even talking about? We can't smell it. And me and my brother would both be like, yeah, you know that smell. And he'd be like, ooh, this smells like Georgia clothes. And I'd smell it and I'd be like, yeah, I can smell Georgia clothes. My mom and my grandmother were like, what are you even talking about? And my grandmother would say that when she would buy us clothes, she would put them in like a cedar chest or something like that. So that was the only thing she could think of as to why we think the clothes from Georgia smell a certain way but yeah I'm definitely getting Georgia clothes <laughs> smell and I know that makes sense to like literally no one but that's where my brain goes when I smell this fabric so thanks for the nostalgia Derek and Christian maybe it's because they're from the south too I don't know maybe it's a southern thing <sighs> but yeah memories but my misgivings about this fabric I mean I kind of really like the idea of doing it on exactly this like a nice dull lavender but um there is some lavender in the design and especially around the dragon like the ch the drop shadow underneath it is very much a lavender color so that's the only thing that gives me pause you know there's a lot of lavender in the wings but it's surrounded by other colors so that might be okay also the like riders holding like a crystal ball thing and that is like exactly this color so it wouldn't really show up too well but let me try and get some kind of a toss here for you guys again trying not to dump everything on the floor but yeah you can see how some of like 
like this one right here is a threat. But I have to remind myself, this is a Teresa Wensler. Chances are that thread is blended with another thread. So, might be okay. And I do think, I'll have to double check. I'm thinking I don't need this whole piece. Because Dragon Ride's not very big. It's probably going to fit like right here. So I might be able to get away with cutting this in half. Or at the very least, cutting a fourth of it off. I don't know. Because so I could use that for ornaments. I'm trying to stitch more ornaments. I do not have any ornaments in this kit parade, though. Just so you know. I tend to start those on a whim. Because you can do that with small designs, I feel like. Alright. I've been talking so much that my throat's getting a little froggy. So, pardon me. I also have some probably lukewarm coffee at this point here. Okay, so now we go to the floor pile and they're all in these little things. <laughs> What's funny is a few of those I really want to start, so I need to get them a box. Okay, so we're going with the first one I grabbed, which this one I majorly want to start. And, uh, she's a little different for me. -ish. She's a deity. Villa Filipina. La Capati. Isn't that yellow red dress just, oh, just awesome. It's so yummy. I love how rich and royal it is. And oh, I love everything about this piece. Like, as soon as I saw this piece, I was like, oh, gimme. And I think right around the time I got her, I got this fabric. The recommended fabric is a, I believe, um, uh, Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. A lot of times Bella Filipina pictures theirs on Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. And I liked it, and I was like, typically I don't like the recommended fabric or my egotistical side thinks, can I find something better? <laughs> um, but I was like down enough that I thought, oh, I might just order that. But then I think I got this, was this? We're not quite at Georgia closed yet, but it's close. Um, I'm trying to think if I got this for the Fabric of the Month or if it was on one of their, um, which is probably Fabric of the Month because it's a, um, quarter. But I'm like, you know, this works. Why do I need to order more when I got this? It's also opalescent. And let me see. We're going to do the handful of, of threads thing here because I don't have these things, um, bobbinated. Oh, but look at it. Oh my God, I think it's gonna be awesome. Mm. So yeah, I, which I'm not a huge yellow person, but a lot of times when there's yellow bits in designs, for some reason, I'm like, ooh, yeah. I mean, Fairy Idyll, her yellow dress. Um, the Hummingbird Pixie, the little pop of yellow in her wings. I'm like, ooh, yellow. Which is funny, because yellow's not a big color of mine, but I don't know, it's poppy. And it's different, like, I don't like, I like, diversifying what I stitch, you know, because at the end of the day, we're all staring at this stuff for a while, you know, so sometimes your eyes just want to change, you know, and I think maybe that's what the yellow is doing for me. But I kind of want to bump this up and like, I have the threads, like all I need is a bin to put the fibers in, in a box. I mean, I could keep it in this too. That's also allowed, <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, like I kind of want to bump this up and almost put this in the let's let's just do it pile because I like her that much. She is also the said to be the companion piece for Magwayan, which she's sitting right here. I can't remember if I showed this in my last video. They're supposed to be companions. So let's see. Let me do my due diligence and pull her out and give you guys a side by side because you guys deserve that. So yeah, she is the goddess of like the harvest and growing things. And she is like the goddess of the underworld and the ocean. I know I should want to start her first, but that yellow dress is just like, bam, that and, um, gosh, trying to get the glare off 
Some of the colors in these ribbons in this boat are throwing me a little bit. I love her black and blue dress, like mm, divine, awesome, love it. It's just these ribbons. There's some like olive greens and fuchsia, which I'm kind of like, eh, don't know about that. So, but because the pile is so massive, <laughs> Um, I'm not throwing her in just yet. I do really like her dress. I think it's cool. A lot of people are stitching her right now and she's looking gorgeous. So that's probably going to motivate me to bump her higher up in the list. All right, next in line. Another Bella Filipina. So this is another deity. Deity of the stars. Let me guess. Is it Tala? I got it right. I have a hard time remembering the names for the Bella Filipina deities sometimes. But, oh, I love her. Love, love, love her. And you're going to see some galaxy fabric again. Yay! I don't have threads for her yet, but um, I really want to get them because I really like her. And I'm going back and forth on this fabric. My puppy's come over to see me. Hi, baby girl. Um, going back and forth, because this is a, a half yard, so I need to cut this in half for her. So I'm going back and forth. Do I want this piece that's more dark colors, very little green, because her dress is green? Or do I want this piece, which has more green? Aesthetically, I like this piece better, um, but I have to remind myself, she's going to be right here covering this area, and that's kind of the cool part in this fabric, which, you know play a little violin for me you know that's where anything is going to go on this piece so I'm kind of thinking I should pick this piece because there's just a little bit of green you know whispering around through here and she's going to cover this part so I think that would be good and then of course I play the which way is up game and she has um as you can see like a really cool kind of I don't know, mandala type design around her head. And I'm thinking when I look at this, that that would look the coolest if it's in a dark spot, like right here. So I'm kind of leaning towards this piece here, even though aesthetically I prefer this piece. Though, if I choose this piece on the back here, that means this piece is still available for something, which I have not used up a yard of fabric faster than I have this color. You know, Pisces got some of it. She's got some of it. Temptress of the Cursed Key C got some of it. And then I've got a little bit left over. I could stitch some more Zodiac signs by Nora Corbet. But I kind of don't want to go down the path. Like, I feel like if I stitch another one, then I'm going to feel compelled to stitch all of them. And I don't love all of them. And also, that's a lot of work. <laughs> so I might just pick out, like, I don't know, my kids' Zodiac signs or something like that and stitch those ones. Or just the ones I like the best. I do really like... Aries, I think it is. I think Aries is really pretty. So, Gemini is kind of fun too because there's two ladies in that one. Two for one deal. All right, who's next? Okay. This time we have a Mirabilia. So, here's this gal, Cathedral Woods Goddess. And I have the fabric for her, I think. I don't have her threads yet. So that's why she is not a committed start. This is fabric by Bestitch Me. And I also have a half yard here. And I'm thinking this half is what's going to go for her. And I think she'll work because a lot of these colors are kind of same, same, but I'll make that decision when I get the threads. If it's too, too same, same, then I'll make that call. But her dress is kind of more on the greeny side, like kind of a green teal instead of a blue teal. So I think it might be okay. There are a lot of coppers and brown in this, and she's got a lot of coppers and brown, though. Like, see her threads, her silk? They're, like, pretty matchy-matchy, so I may not want to use this one. But I do think it's really cool, you know? Like, ah, oh, I kind of dig it a little bit. And I don't know, I kind of also think about stitching, like, Autumn Queen on this one. Same problem there, though. I did also consider this piece for um, Cleopatra, 
everybody's stitching Cleopatra on like a sand or a brown and I just don't I don't want to join that crowd because I don't know I've been to Cleopatra ruled in Alexandria Egypt Alexandria is on the coast of the Mediterranean and I've been there and my impression of it was not brown like there was a lot of palm trees it was more humid than the rest of Egypt like you'd go down into like the catacombs or the tombs and they're flooded you know which was kind of felt weird after being in very arid tombs and you know desert but right on the edge of the Sahara like that just felt weird to me so brown is not what I'm feeling for her even though I know like a lot of the palace areas were probably brown but they also had like lots of like plants and stuff like that so I'm also which why am I even talking about Cleopatra like I'm gonna be get she's down here we'll get to her but I did flirt with the idea of using that fabric for her just because it's not just brown and the colors are kind of Egyptian you know they're like blues and you know coppers and I could see it working okay another Bella Filipina mermaid I just want to stitch them all <laughs> okay so this one I don't have the threads bobbinated hopefully I don't make a huge mess with that famous last words I know this is Pearl of the Orient Seas. And this is what happens when you get your first Bella Filipina and you're all excited and you open it up. And it comes in like this plastic cling film that like has adhesive. Before you pull this out of the container, flip over the adhesive because otherwise it sticks to the picture and rips pieces off of it. I have several that look like this because of that. So now when you get a new Bella Filipina, like... It comes like this fold this bit over so it doesn't stick because it sticks like I, I I could say something profane but I won't <laughs> um, yeah if you don't want to rip up your picture you know tape it over so that's why that's all messed up so let me show you where I'm going with this one I don't know if I showed you this or not I can't remember if I did it was a while ago so it's probably a good refresher for you too so this is uh, la, 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 Fiery Skies by Under the Sea Fabrics. So I like this because it's like passes for the ocean, but it's got the red because she's like a red mermaid, which that's one thing I like about her. Usually mermaids aren't red. And let me see. I was thinking, because this is where I play fabric, fabric Tetris for the most part, so there's a lot of blue more on this side here. And when you see her, her tail goes off to uh, your left. <laughs> and so I kind of want her tail, which is red, to be in this area. Because if it's in this area, it's going to blend in with the fabric. So I'm thinking I'm going to orient her so that her tail swings off this way. So it's in the blue, which will make the red pop out more. So I'm digging that idea. Opalescent, of course. Um, here's the threads and the reds in her are very kind of bricky you know so they whoop, there's one on the floor told you what happened so and I might be missing a couple but yeah doing the toss I'm like yeah that'll work I'm happy with that that and I like that it's very different from like other other mermaid fabrics that I've done I like them to look pretty diverse Pick up this piece of floss before I forget. Someone's tired. Okay, so let's get this one put away. We're nearly there. We've got, by my count, five more. <laughs> and there's plenty more I got smattered around, you know, like I'm sure I'm probably forgetting a couple too. This one. Oh, I don't have threads for her. And I have a fabric that I think I like for her, but it depends on what the threads look like. So this is a Mirabilia mermaid, the Mediterranean mermaid. I fancy stitching her this way because I feel like that would break up the monotony. So many mermaids are like straight up and down. So I feel like it'd be cool to have a lateral oriented mermaid. I think that would be cool. That and I like that it looks this way. It looks like she's scooping up you know, like the water or something. I mean, she looks cool like this too, but 
I'm just digging, mixing it up a little bit. I was at first not sure of her chartreuse fin, but then I've seen pictures of her online and I think it looks cool. I have decided I am converting her to a blonde just because there's like no blonde mermaids that are Miravelius for the most part. So I just want to do something other than brown for a change. Um, here's the fabric that I have in mind for her. This is by Seraphim Fabrics. It is a sea spray. Opalescent. And I like the rich, yummy, vivid kind of color to it. And it feels very Mediterranean to me. You know, she's a Mediterranean mermaid. But, you know, her tail's got some blue in it. So I'm not sure how that's going to go. We'll see. Because it, from looking at this, like, the tail doesn't look too vivid. But when I've seen online, it looks more vivid. So just kind of depends on how things go. There's the beads. I know that's not going to do too much for you, especially with the freaking glare. But, yeah. Got the bead pack for it. Lots of fun teardrops on this one. I'm excited about that. Got a bunch of Mill Hills to convert. More for the giveaway at the end of the year, probably. <laughs> Speaking of which, I will probably do another giveaway, just not this video. Um, maybe the next one. It's just, I knew this video was going to be really long, so I didn't want to make it longer. Alrighty. Get this put away. Yeah, I would like to start this one and I'm kind of motivated to start her because when I look at the chart, I'm like, she looks pretty easy. She's kind of on the smaller side. Mermaid speaking. This Speaking of small designs, this is another Nora Corbet. I need to do some converting for her though. This is the Halloween Fairy. Now, I've seen other people mention as well that we think dye lots have changed because this, this came as a kit. And because some of these colors are like, first off, like looking at the picture, like her wings are like, um, where was it? Somewhere. Maybe it's her dress. Like her dress looks kind of purple, but all that's in here is like brown. So I think I'm going to convert things a little bit. I think I'm going to make her dress more purple a little bit just because I think that's fun. She also definitely needs more metallic. And most of these threads in here, like they're not very varied. That's no fun. I want mine to vary a little bit more. <laughs> this girl. I have four pieces of fabric in here for her because I can't make up my mind on what I want. I am going to post this on my Instagram too, but I'm just going to give you guys kind of a deck of cards view. So you can see where my brain is going. Like subdued. Kind of neutral. Either purple, gray, brown, or green. <laughs> so, but I got to convert her first. I think she'd look fine on any of these. Like, I don't think it really matters. Only one of these is not opalescent. That's this one. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of these are by Crazy Hamster on eBay. Again, I'll be linking her in the description. She's always got fun stuff on there. So, and these are, a lot of these are even weaves. Oh, there's a couple linens. They're fine. So, yeah. She's getting kind of spoiled in the fabric department, which, you know, she comes with fabric, but I'm not using raw neutral. Like, it's so fun. Really want to start her because I know she'd be a quick finish. So, I might throw her somewhere in the middle of all these starts just because she'd be a finish eventually. A lot of the stuff that I'm starting... Ain't getting finished this year, probably for sure. Probably for sure. All right, this piece, no fabric. Doesn't even have a proper bag, how sad. Um, no threads either. But I, well, I have my metallics and I have a couple beads. I don't have all of them. But this is Andromeda by Nora Corbet. I really like her. Like, I dig her. The only thing is I think I am going to change her hair color. I think I'm going to make her blonde too, just for fun. Maybe strawberry blonde, maybe just to mix it up a little bit. I was a real fan, big fan of Clash of the Titans, the original one. The one with the Harry House and uh, Medusa in it. I would die for someone to do a Medusa design. Can you imagine? I know it would be really hard to get the snakes right, though. But um, I just, I don't know, I really like her. There's kind of a forlorn forlornness to her. Like, I don't know. Kind of e almost emo, like 
it's I, I feel bad for her because it's like she didn't do anything wrong. Her mom was bragging on her and now she's getting fed to a monster. It's like, thanks, mom. Thanks. <laughs> you know? like, appreciate it. <laughs> But she's got a lot more like her her, her, her purple. Yeah, I can't talk. Her dress is like purple. She's got a lot of purple beads and stuff. And I like the rock and the splash of the waves. Like, I don't know. I dig it. I dig it. I am thinking of maybe recycling this rock too with the waves. There's a Bella Filipina mermaid, Luna Mystica, I think it is. She's like sitting on a moon made out of flowers, and I'm not sure I love the moon. So I'm thinking of putting her on that rock. I think that'd be cool. I don't have that design yet, though. I need to get it. She's kind of cool because she's got kind of silvery hair, too. I like when the hair is different. Okay, this one, I do want to start for diversification purposes, even though uh, Romance of the Sea would also work for that. Got this guy here. And I want to start him because he's a dude, basically. And I want to do the way Tristan, not Trist, Christian, oh my God, Triton and Christian married. And that's where that came from. Um, but Christian off um, Fortnite Fabrics, he converted his skin to African skin tones and it looks so good. And I really want to do that. So I think I'm going to do that. I love this fabric and it's, Oh, I, I was looking to see if I could score some, but I don't even know if the company does it. It's not um, Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. Um, I have been flirting with the idea of getting some fabric dye and trying to do some dyeing myself, but I do know that that's probably going to be a rabbit hole. So, um, I have a couple of different fabrics in mind for him, though. I'm not sure which one I like better. Again, I don't have all the floss. Looks like I've got... Looks like I got a couple flosses. Hmm, interesting. Look at the tiny little bead pack for him. Isn't that cute? You might need some more beads. We'll see about that, sweetie. Okay, so first piece of fabric I have in mind is an under the sea fabric, and I do really like it. I think it'll look cool on it. Uh, let's see, I would orient it this way. Yeah, this is what is you? Midnight Mermaid. Yeah, I dig it. He'd look good. But this or this. I have another piece. This one is by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. This is called the Siren Depths. Very similar. It's another ombre. Or actually, I think this is a painted fabric because it's kind of not an ombre. It's kind of more of a like the edges are painted. Got a hard crease. See, I need to iron this because this crease is driving me crazy and I don't want it to like imprint on the fabric. I think it'd look good on either of them. I kind of dig this one a little better, but I also like the deep spookiness that this one's kind of got. So I will probably make that decision once I get the thread for him and decide his skin conversion. See what, see what looks better for his skin tone. I'm thinking this lighter one might work a little better. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know what your favorite is. Because sometimes you guys can push me over one way or another. But yeah, this is cool fabric. I like it. I like Fiberlicious Show Me Fibers. Their colors are kind of wild. I like I like them. <laughs> Sometimes they're a little too wild, but nothing wrong with that. Okay. Uno mas. And by process of elimination, if you've been paying attention, you can probably guess what the last design is. Since I spoke about her already. Got Miss Cleopatra by Bella Filipina. I'm dying to start her. Cannot land on a fabric yet, though. And I want the fabric to be good, you know. So here she is. I am also going back and forth on changing her dress color. Mostly because of the, oh, when was it? It was like the late 90s. They did a movie on Cleopatra that was like a TV miniseries with Lenora Varilla and, was it Timothy Dalton, I think? And... 
oh, what's his face? He was the Phantom and he was on Titanic. His name's escaping me right now. Um, played Mark Anthony. Um, but a lot of times the Cleopatra in that show wore like kind of olive green. And I kind of really like that idea more so than the yellow. So there is a little bit of green like in the pillars that this papyrus pattern. But I wouldn't make her dress that color green. So I'm kind of playing with the thought of changing her dress to a green color. Because I don't know, I think that would make the golds pop a little bit more instead of just kind of blending with it. Also, I am darkening her skin tone a little bit. Just giving her kind of a tan. Speaking of which, I'm darkening her skin tone too. And I'm not sure, like I, I found like, I went with like another recommend, like there's like these charts. If you go online, like cross stitch skin color conversion, there's like these graphs with like colors you can go from. And so I was looking for like, oh yeah, kind of a darker tan color. But I'm not sure. It kind of looks more like coffee than anything else. So I might be making a trip to the craft store and buying every flesh color I can find and converting from that. So this girl is big though. Like she's got a big old handful of floss. She's also got a big old bag of metallics. And she's got a bag of silk and beads. So I'm very excited to do her. I just can't land on the perfect fabric for her and she needs a really good fabric. You know, like she's a queen. She needs fabric fit for a queen. So, but I am very excited to start her. I think, is she the only historical figure that's been put out by, a design, by Bella Filipina? I think so. Everything else is like mythological, I believe, or fantastical. Um, I think she's the only historical figure. She's definitely the only historical figure that I'll be stitching, you know, which I'm not stitching her yet because she's not a whip yet. But anyways, we are at an hour and a half. Holy shit. <laughs> so I knew that was going to take a while. Um, but that's all the stuff that I am kidding up. Obviously, I'm not starting every single thing this year. That would probably be if I started one thing a month, I wouldn't get all this stuff started. And I am not too keen on. Well, maybe I could start one thing a month. Maybe I can make that a goal and then throw in a few other things here and there, you know, because realistic, that's more realistic than starting every single thing, you know, so, oh, and I just realized I forgot one. <laughs> Let's look at it real quick. I don't know that I'll start this this year because I don't have like a burning desire to do it, even though I'm pretty sure I have everything for it. <laughs> it's actually got a bin too because I've had it kitted up for so long. So this is the Lavender and Lace. I have not stitched one of these designs yet, but I decided my first one should be the Angel of the Sea. I'm not typically a big angel person, but throw some ocean in there and I'm, I'm game. So um, with this piece, I think I've showed this to you before. I picked Nessie by Angel of the Sea Fabrics. It's um, very Mother Earth looking. It's green and blue. She does have a lot of green and blue, but for her, I'm okay with the monochromatic thing because her wings kind of touch the fabric the most. So yeah, there's that. That is the last piece. Okay, and again, this one I don't know that I'm starting this year, even though I, I really should. I'd love to do a lavender and lace. I've got lots of lavender and lace designs that I want to start, but I've never started one before just because, you know, the Mirabilia's, the Bella Filipinas, Teresa Wensler's, things like that have always kind of jumped in front of them at line. So I should start at least one. I also really want to do the fairy grandmother and uh, there's another design that I bought which I'm going to go over a little teeny tiny bit of haul before we leave here and I'll talk about that then. But yeah, I really want to stitch some from that designer because I haven't done that yet. So, okay. Um, so, teeny tiny bit of haul. Let's see here. And I bought this um, Mirabilia. It's an out of print one. I got it on eBay and I got a pretty sweet deal on it. I got it for $20, including the shipping. She's out of print. Uh, the only thing you could say is wrong with her is there's a couple like tally marks next to some of the threads, but there's no marks on the actual chart itself. And this one, I've, I think I owned this before and got rid of it. But I've always fancied it for the most part. And, but one thing that bothers me 
well, what I decided bothered me was I don't like the colors of the roses. They're too dainty, dusty, vintage. So um, I think I'm going to switch those roses to like oranges, something warmer. Um, I don't think I'll do them purple. I'm really kind of thinking like a, a rich fall orange or something like that. Making her into some, just some different colors a little bit. Um, also might change her hair just because that's the theme right now, apparently for me. <laughs> So yeah, but I was excited to catch that, you know, and I was really surprised, like, wow. I think it was a buy it now, so like I jumped on it, so it wasn't like, you know, nobody else was paying attention. I think I got to it first. Here's another design that I picked up. This is out of, I don't know if it's out of print. I don't think any of these are out of print, but like some of them are very hard to find, but this is another lavender and lace, and this is the, I printed out a picture of it. This is the Enchanted Alphabet. Someone who got it framed by Rensel Studios, converted this to like blue 